I'm not sure I do. Okay. Howdy. <laughs> nice background. Mike, get nice. a light. <laughs> I know. I'm on the couch. I need to get a light. Oh, jeez. Okay. This isn't this is an audio class though, not a not a lighting class, so I didn't fail yet. You right, stay. Right. Is that the Lion King background? It is. <laughs> That's awesome. You can see the pride rock in the background. Yes. So, there it is. <laughs> so All right, everybody, if you don't mind muting, just in case there's huge background noises, or if you feel like typing when, you, uh, when you're when you not muted, it makes a whole lot of clackety clack so, so thank you so much. Thanks for being here today, everybody. Delana and I are excited to share what, what we know. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, Delana, and give a little background so these guys know who you are and what you do. Cool. Uh, I'm, my name's Delana Baker. I'm a digital marketing uh, specialist, expert, social media strategist is kind of what I'm known for. Um, I started out, gosh, about 14 or 15 years ago, starting with, um, I went to school to be a writer because I thought I was going to have a New York Times bestseller by the time I was 25. Um, listen, that dream has not died. Okay. It has not died. We're just moving it. We're just moving it along. <laughs> um, so that was my background. And I started when the mommy blogging thing took off. I started doing that um, when I stayed at home with my kids. So I learned about SEO and I learned about um, web development and I learned about all those things on the back end. Um, and that kind of grew into these mommy bloggers, these popular mommy bloggers uh, would say, hey, can you write my Facebook posts? And I said, I, I don't even know what that means. I have no idea what that means. I don't know what that is. So of course I, I dug in and this was before Instagram ever even started. Um, and then I got to the point where I, then they started the Facebook, uh, groups and Facebook page, business pages didn't even exist then. So, um, then I just kind of learned more about it. And then it got to the point where I started asking my friends, Hey, can I run your social media account and see what that's like? And then I started realizing that social media management was like a thing. So, and it grew from there. And about six or seven years ago, I started, I went in on my own. Um, I still freelance write cause, and blog write and um, stuff like that because I love writing, it's my passion. Um, but what I, tr what I do, like my main job is I'm a social media strategist. So I help small businesses um, propel their digital uh, marketing or any kind of social media marketing that they need. So and that includes email marketing and everything as well. So I think um, Jim and I met Jim and Beth um, at some Orlando, networking things. And, uh, I love what Jim does and I could see us doing, you know, he came to me with this idea and I love it because both things mesh together very well. And, uh, I'm really excited to do this series with you guys. Well, thanks Delaina. Delaina is really the, the, the other side of this whole thing, because, you know, I'm going to talk a lot about tech and, and, and building it and, uh, logistics and stuff, but having the greatest product in the world is no good if you can't tell people about it. And so a big part of this, uh, unless you just want to record it and leave it on your hard drive, you know, you, most of us want someone listening. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's uh, hi, Tom. Good to see you, sir. Um, most of us uh, would like someone to listen. And so Delaine is going to talk to us a lot about uh, further down this about how to market it, how to use analytics to track who's listening and, and build your, your listenership. This becomes especially important if you plan to, I hate the word, but monetize your blog or your podcast. So if you have the intention of making some money on this, which we will discuss in greater detail later, then what Delena has to say becomes suddenly very relevant to, um, to all of us. So, so podcasters, uh, I can't see everybody. So I, I was going to do a show of hands, but you're all hiding. So I'm going to assume that everyone here has uh, listen to podcasts already uh, and is a avid listener in which case I'll probably describe you in this little bit of background I have here um, very quickly podcasting was invented in 2004 by a MTV VJ named Adam Curry those of us who are old enough to remember MTV when it was music uh, will remember Adam and a software developer friend of his they wrote a program because they wanted to bring internet radio programs uh, to his iPod and he wrote a quick script that allowed him to download them and that became that was a program called iPodder so podcasting is of course named after the Apple um, Apple machine but nobody uses an iPod to listen to podcasts anymore but it still carries that same name so um, it's mostly amateurs out there making podcasts like me and the rest of us, but there are obviously the big boys are into it now. Everything from large news outlets like NPR and CBS and everyone else to um, 
large corporations, Ford and Toyota and everybody else have their own podcasts as well. So it's, a, it's such a wide spectrum. There are already one million different podcast shows out there, um, which is doubled from 2018. So in two years, the number of podcasts has doubled. Um, and there's over 30 million episodes out there. Sounds like a lot. And I guess it is because it would take you a while to listen to all that. But compare that with 500 million blogs and 30 million YouTube channels and suddenly 1 million podcasts. It's a very, um, there's room is what I'm saying. If there's 500 million YouTube channels, there's lots of room for you and your podcast out there. So don't be discouraged by that number. Um, more than half of the U.S. population has listened to a podcast. Um, I think it's something like 110 million households listening. And the average listener uh, listens to seven different shows a week. And 80% of them listen to all or part or most or all of every episode. So most people, once they start one, go all the way through it. 20% um, of them listen at an increased speed. I don't know if any of you guys do that. Speed it up a little bit, 2x, so you get through it faster. Uh, Delana does that. My friend Adam tells me he listens to all, all his podcasts at 2x. So I don't do it. Too. Audiobooks, I listen to that too. Do you really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like regular speed. I'm, I guess I'm a, I, I think I also think slower, slower along, along with it. So, but that's totally the user preference. Once you've built your podcast and recorded it, you know, let them decide how fast. Uh, most popular uh, genre of podcasts out there is comedy followed by education and news. So keep those things in mind when you're deciding what your podcast is gonna be. So, episode one, why do you want to start a podcast? Um, today's episode of this show is to help you kind of take your nugget of an idea, your um, kernel of an idea, if you will, and help flesh it out. Um, at the end, I don't know if you guys are taking notes, but at the end of this, uh, we're going to send you a checklist, a sheet that contains basically everything I'm about to ask, and you can fill it out, and that'll be your homework for the following episode when we come back. So you'll get that in your email at whichever email you use to sign up for this. So why do you want to start a podcast? Is it something that you're good at? Perhaps you have a skill or a particular uh, depth of knowledge about something that you are very good at. Perhaps you're a Civil War buff and you want to talk about that. Perhaps you are a carpenter and um, it's something that you want to share with people. Um, so a skill or a, a, an area of knowledge is a great place to start, especially if, you've, if it's a, a rather unique skill, right? Something that you've developed that you feel like you could share with people. Um, another thing is what are you passionate about? Those two generally go hand in hand. I, I would say that something that you're very passionate about is also probably something you're good at because you spend a lot of time at it, right? Um, if you decide what you want to talk about, or when you decide, you gotta think about who, who wants to hear it. Who's my target audience for this? You know, Who else, if I'm the Civil War buff, for example, who am I talking to? What is the profile of those people? not just because it will help you um, craft the content of the podcast episodes themselves, but also when we get to Delena, I'm pointing that way because she's right beside me here. But when we get to Delena and towards the later parts of this program, when you go to market, you need to figure out how are you going to get it into the ears of your listeners, right? Where, where are they hiding? What do they do? How do I reach them and let them know that I exist? So knowing who your target audiences from the beginning will help you not only find them, but then give them something that they are interested in listening to. Um, where is there currently a gap? Where in the, in the genre that I'm talking about, what, what is missing? What, why isn't the thing that I'm thinking about, why doesn't it already exist? And what I'm saying there is do some homework. When I first, uh, hey, Christine, when I first started um, my podcast, I searched, searched, and searched 
to find out who else was doing so something similar to this. And there were, I'll tell you a little bit about mine later if you want to know, but there were some podcasts out there that sort of touched on what I was doing. But as I dug around, I found that there wasn't anybody who did exactly what I was up to. So I thought, okay, there's room in this marketplace for me. So think about before you just say, I'm going to go talk about this, see what else is out there, right? Do your, do your oppo research as the politicos call it, you know, do check out what else is there and find out if there's someone who's doing something similar, see what you can do differently. Delena. Yes, I just want to touch on that. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. No, also, please. If you um, just for analytical research too, if you're using your Google uh, keywords, if any of you are familiar with um, the digital world, you can, if you Google something, like let's say you want to talk about um, chocolate chip cookies, you want to, whatever you want to do, um, you type in chocolate chip cookie and whatever you see come down on the bottom, it says, it'll say chocolate cookie recipes chocolate cookies, best cookie ever, you know, whatever it is, when you see those kind of keywords or when you're typing in your subject, whatever, that's the majority of what people are looking for. So that means people are actually typing and using that. So use, you could use Google, use YouTube. Those are the two biggest search engines we have. And believe it or not, the third largest search engine that we have is Pinterest. It's not just about mommy bloggers these days too. Um, we'll get to that obviously, but you know, Pinterest is definitely somewhere you should be considering uh, putting your podcast, um, no matter what the genre is. So just keep that in mind when it comes to what you're, especially in a gym, we'll go over it when you're in marketing, when we're titling it or what you want to do or how you want to do it. Um, just be very niche specific as well too. That also helps with um, marketing. So, yeah. Absolutely. And then also, you know, go into Apple podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or any of the various different outlets and search for the subject matter you're, you're doing, you know, not necessarily the title, but the content and those will come up as well. Um, ask yourself, what do I bring to this subject that will be different? What is my unique selling proposition? What is the thing that I bring to this? Because that will help you when you're crafting the, um, the summary description that shows up when people stumble across your podcast or find it. You're going to want to use those words that make you unique, what, whatever education, ability, experience, practice, whatever makes you different, that's where you get to put that sort of information in. So that's a good thing to think about from the outset. What is your motivation? I'm not talking actors here. I'm talking about, are you trying to do this because you want to make some money? Hi, Polly. Hi, Polly. Polly's Hi, fine too. You know, are you trying to make money at this? Is this a is this a side hustle? Is this a business proposition? Is this a way to make some extra cash? Um, and when I say make money at it, there's a couple of ways to do it, right? One is direct income, meaning you develop a, a listenership, you get a nice large number of subscribers to your podcast, and then advertisers will become interested in advertising on your show. Most of them won't look at you under a thousand subscribers. So it might take a little while to build that up. And it's listening uh, hours too, I believe. Sorry, say that again? I, I believe it's listening hours as well. So it's your subscribers versus your listening hours too, I believe. Yep. Uh, weekly streams, I think, is how the, the broadcaster that I use describes it. Um, and it's probably, yeah, measured in minutes per week or something like that of actual listeners. Um, so, but there's also other ways, right? Um, if you listen to a podcast and you are a subscriber and you listen all the time, you probably have something in common with the other listeners of that podcast. And if you want to reach them, you can reach out to the podcaster and say, hey, I want to sponsor your show. Um, Beth has done that a couple of times with a local podcast here in town called Bungalower in the Bus. John and Brendan do a podcast weekly. And she and I have both advertised on that show. This is not them saying, you know, pulling in a, a Google ad, or audio ad or something. It's us calling them up and saying, hey, can I be the sponsor for one of your episodes? And what would that cost me? And then we negotiate that. And so that's income for them. So they're actually making direct income. Indirect income would be like if you have a, oh, I don't know, a photography business, for example, and you wanted to augment your photography by creating sort of online advertising. So in other words, if I went online and talked about photography tips and tricks, I might gain some listeners that way and drive them to my primary business, thereby essentially creating my own advertising. 
So that's what I mean by indirect money. Um, a second kind of motivation for doing this in the first place, and some of you may fall into this category, is just I know something or I'm, I'm learning something and I want to share that experience with others. It's really not about, it's more like a hobby, right? I'm doing it because, hey, this is a fun outlet for me and there's actually some folks out there who might be interested in it. If it blows up and you start getting calls that people want to advertise on your show, great. Um, but in my case, anyway, that's not really a motivator. It's more about an experience and the fact that I get to interview people that are interesting. And frankly, when I call them up and say, I have a podcast, I'd like to talk to you. It's um, an excuse for me to meet some interesting people. And it's less creepy than just saying, hey, I want to meet you and talk to you, which is weird. So um, that's what I do. And then, you know, another thing might be you want to learn a new skill and you want to describe to an audience what that process is like. I've heard a lot of people doing podcasts where they're kind of like, you know, I'm going through this process and I want to tell you about it so that if you're thinking about the same thing, you can kind of understand it a little bit like a blog in that, in that way. Uh, finally, in my, in the why segment of this, I want to talk about how much time you have to dedicate to it. Now in this particularly strange time, I think a lot of us have more time on our hands than normal, normal time. So I wouldn't, hi Lynn. I wouldn't, um, necessarily base it on what you've got right now although what a great time to start because there's much more time invested in the startup part of this thing than there will be in the maintenance part so if you've got a couple of weeks off work right now and you're able to dedicate it to this then this might be this might be the time so what you want to think about though is and, and we're going to go into great detail about this later you want to talk about the time well let me go into the planning and then i'll come back to that so planning, um, when, you, when we send you the, the form to fill out, think of all of these things as a starting point. Don't feel like the minute you write it down, it's gonna be carved in stone. These will evolve. Um, my podcast has changed over time and I'm sure yours will too. Um, so things you want to think about are how long will each episode be and how frequently will it be put out there? Now, frequency is one of those things that can change based on a lot of factors, right? Um, I thought, I can do a weekly podcast, how hard can it be? And I found out very fast that it's a large number of hours. So if, back to that question of how much time do you have to dedicate, if you have the kind of podcast where you're interviewing other people, you've got to find the time, coordinate logistically when and where and how long we're going to meet for. Um, you have the time of the actual interview itself. And then like with video, if any of you guys have ever done any video editing, the real work begins, right? You come back with your memory card and your recording device and you sit down and you say, okay, let's start to edit. And then, you know, nine hours go by for your 30 minute podcast. And <laughs> Tom knows what I'm talking about. Um, it's, uh, it's a, there, there can be a lot of work. Now I say, I spend a lot of time editing um, and that goes down to listener experience later on. There is nothing wrong with bringing your podcast home, putting a bit of music at the beginning and the end, um, adjusting your levels to make sure that Apple will approve it, which we'll talk about and posting it. I mean, you don't have to edit. What I find though, is when I listen to the recordings I've done, I say um too much, I make weird noises, I, there's all kinds of things I had no idea I did. You get a whole different sense of yourself when you listen carefully to your own recording. Um, and my goal is to make myself as well as my guests sound as good as we possibly can. So I spend a lot of time doing the editing. So how long will each episode be approximately? and how frequent. Next, you wanna think about what is the format I'm gonna use? Uh, and by that, I mean, is it me just talking to a microphone every week? Which is great because, you know, easy to schedule. Or are you talking to another person? Is it a dialogue between you as an interviewer 
and the subject? Is it, um, is it you and a buddy talking, shooting the breeze, or a couple of buddies? I, I listen to a podcast with three guys on it, and they do a weekly show, and it's just the three of them every week. And they don't ever have any guests on, which makes it great. All the three of them have to do is connect electronically like this or in person and make their podcast. So that would, you know, and then you can do kind of a group thing. You could have this two interviewers uh, talking to one subject, for example, which means that you never run out of questions. So, so format is important to think about in advance because it's going to help with the description. It's going to help you plan how you're going to do this. Next, I will talk about the location. If it's just you by yourself, then find a quiet place in the house without too much echo and sit down and start recording. If, if, it's, if you have a studio or a place you like to record, you can bring your guests into your house when things return to normal, or you can go to them. Um, for my podcast, I always go to where the person is, and so there's a lot of scheduling time and place and you know, making sure that it's, um, it's as convenient for them as possible. Um, Jim, have you seen those? I was looking for it. Excuse my typing while everybody can hear me typing. They're, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Um, it's a professional sound, like it's like a, a little booth, like it's like a little acoustic foam booth. Oh, right. Fairly inexpensive. Desktop size thing? What's that? Like desktop sized? Yeah, like kind of sits. Let me share that with everybody real quick. Yeah, for for sound quality, yeah, you want to. Yeah, let me. Uh, we'll talk more about the tech, the sound um, levels and stuff when we get into the tech. Can you guys see that? Oh yeah. So That's it just sits cool. on your your desktop there. Oh, nice. So if you you have, add, that, you add that to our equipment list for, um, uh, I forget what they call it. It's, a, um, they called it something and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Sound um, shield. Yeah. Audio booth. They called it a pod booth or booth pod or something. And I was like, when somebody was talking about it, I'm like, so you want me to build a pod in my house? But this mm -hmm. is I like it. Okay. That, um, we'll, we'll, when we get into gear and talking about microphones and, and recording equipment and stuff, those are the kinds of things where, you, you know, the audio quality matters. Um, the listeners may not know the technical side of it, but they know when something doesn't sound good. So um, especially because most people listen with headphones on. So the quality has to be that much better because they're hearing a really clear version of it. So you don't want background noise or echo or, you know, tinny sounds or anything. So. Um, subject matter boundaries, right? Um, when you're planning out your, your podcast, you want to think about how broad am I going to get with my subject? Is it, are we going to stay right on point? And anytime my, my interviewee wanders on down a rabbit trail, I know I'm editing that out. Or is it going to be a wide range of topics where it's just like, this is an interesting person. Let's see what they have to say. Um, you know, if you're doing a show on carpentry and someone tunes in because they are interested in carpentry and you start talking about the ball game last weekend, you're quickly going to lose your audience. But if it's a person that people are really interested in hearing from, they could pretty much say anything and you'll have them hanging on every word. So it depends on your subject matter, how, how wide a range you want to do. If you are doing an interview format, if you're, which is a very popular way of doing this, if you decide I'm going to talk to people and certain, who, who will those subjects be? Um, I would recommend planning several interviewees and lining them up, running the idea by them and saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this podcast. Would you be one of my guests? And try to get a couple lined up because there's a lot of podcasts out there with one or two episodes. And then it just sort of, fell off a cliff because they had an idea. I want to talk to people like Joe. And so we go and interview Joe and Joe says, yep. And then have a great chat. And then who's after Joe? And it's sort of like, mm, no, I don't. So brainstorm, if you're doing the interview process, brainstorm on who all I could ask to be on my show and try a few of them. Say, look, this is what I'm thinking about talking about. Would you be on my show? And if possible, set up times with them, right? Record a few. Um, I had six episodes recorded 
and three edited before I launched my podcast. Um, I did it that way because I wanted to be sure I could do, I did weekly for 12 weeks and then I kind of ran out of steam and the holidays came along and it got really difficult. But I managed to do 12 weekly episodes. Um, and so I called that my season one and it ended with 12. And uh, I'm partway into season two now, which started a few weeks ago. And um, I'm doing about every other week at this point. I really don't think my 16 listeners are tapping their fingers, asking where's their next episode. I think it just sort of appears whenever. So, And that's what I meant when I said plan your, your, um, your frequency. Do what you can. This is not a medium like newspapers that have to show up on your doorstep at you know, 7 a.m. every day. This is, if, especially if it's a hobby and you're not trying to make a living off of it, you know, I would say do what you can. I'm trying to do bi-weekly now and it seems to be a little more, I, I find the time to do my editing in there. So it's been hard to set up my interviews, of course, in the last month, but um, yeah. And when you plan out what your conversations are going to look like, whether it's you sitting there talking to a mic by yourself or you and your buddy shooting the breeze over a particular subject or interview style, I like to have my list of subjects slash questions written out in advance to keep me there because out of respect for my interviewee's time and for my listeners, I want to try to stay on topic and make sure that each week we, in my case anyway, each week I ask the same questions of, of every different person. We rabbit trail a little bit, but I always have that list going to make sure, oh, I don't forget it. Because if I've taken the time to set it up, meet the person, set up my gear, have the conversation and leave, and then think of a question I didn't ask, it's really gonna suck to have to go back and do it all again. So try to make sure you're organized, and um, you know, well prepared for it. Uh, I got a couple more things here. How are we doing, Merit? Okay, good. We got some. Oh, thirty. We're good. Um, before I jump ahead, I haven't seen anything in the chat. Um, please feel free if anything I said, um, if you have a clarification or or a question further on any of those, type it in the chat and we'll answer it for sure. Um, so I mentioned earlier something called listener experience or LX as they're calling it now. Um, and, and this part of listener experience, I'm not talking technical about bit rate and bandwidth and gain and all those sorts of things. I'm talking about the content itself. Um, I did some research on techniques for creating better listener experience. And obviously, at least it seems obviously, you know, keep it interesting. Um, and that can often mean being a little bit ruthless in the editing process. When you're sitting there chatting with someone at the time, looking them in the eye and, and there's a lot of body language going on, the conversation can be interesting to you. But when you're in the editing process, try to think about the, the subjects, your, your listeners' attention span and try to make sure that you take out anything that's kind of irrelevant, especially if it's a couple of minute rapid trail that doesn't advance the plot any. So think about interesting content, cutting out the opening chit chat, off topic comments, or one thing I've noticed, um, and this gets into uh, editing a little bit, is some people, when you ask them a question, will pause for three, four, five seconds, especially when they're sitting there with a mic in front of them. People get a little bit um, self-conscious about the saying the wrong thing, and so we'll often just think for a minute or 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a long time of dead air. So it's okay while you're in the process of recording it that they do that, but just mentally note, okay, I'm gonna have to cut out that long pause. And by the way, when you're done editing out all of those pauses and ums and throat clearings and other stuff, you both sound like you have your act together. It's, it's kind of magical when you listen back and it's like, wow, every idea is like right there. Yeah, magic, right? So, um, but think about when you're in the planning stages of keeping things interesting. Um, I know my audience because they're interested in the same thing I am. So what would I be interested in, you know? How am I gonna make this uh, fascinating process? Um, 
have one main topic per episode. It's a bit like advertising, right? In any 30 second TV spot, you can really only get across one point and everything else that happens in it is supporting that point. But if you try to say too much or go in too many directions, it just ends up muddy and confusing. So try to keep your in mind, sort of like have your little mission statement at the top of your page and remember during the conversation, oh, we're getting a little bit off. Let's steer it back to the thing we came here to talk about. Some people are very good at deflecting and moving the conversation the way they want it to. And as the interviewer or the podcaster or the host of the show, you kind of have to wrangle people a bit and pull them back in and say, yeah, that's great. And I've had people talk for 10 minutes and I just cut the whole chunk out. Yeah, Delena. I was on a podcast once and the two hosts, it was two hosts asking me questions <laughs> and one host had a stuffed squirrel and would throw the squirrel at the other host because they were squirreling. Like, and that was their key or they would push the squirrel, uh, you know, to note that, hey, we're squirreling guys. So yeah. I don't know well, if you want to be, it was kind of a dirty podcast. So it wasn't like, you know, totally like professional, <laughs> but it was funny because I was like, why are you guys doing that? Like, you know, anyway. Well, this is why having a partner in it, if you find someone who's as committed as you are and isn't going to bail after three weeks, you can help each other stay on, stay on topic too. I did a podcast with two guys that interviewed me and it was great because they went back and forth. They had a good banter. They'd been doing it for years. So they were really kind of into, they had each, they finished each other's sentences, you know, mm -hmm. and that I think is good for the audience because it keeps the pace going and it doesn't, there's not dead, dead air. So did you um, see uh, chat from Ernie. Oh. Ernie's got a question. Ah, good question, Ernie. Um, yeah, let's hold on to that for a little bit, but yes, we'll touch on that before the end here. Um, summing up your key points. Um, I find it's helpful to, when I introduce the idea to my, to my guest, I sit down and I say, the purpose of this podcast is this, and I kind of frame, here's what we're about to talk about. I don't make my listeners hear that piece anymore, but it does get recorded every time. But I just chop that piece out. So it sounds like we just started the conversation and we were both right in tune with each other. So we'll get into the interview process a little bit further down the road here. But the um, when you are writing up, what are we gonna talk about? Start to think about things like that. Like how are we gonna keep this thing moving? And one last point that will become more relevant later is make it easy to listen to your podcast. Meaning, don't require a special sign up, don't require downloads or hoops to jump through. Um, that's more of a listener experience. When somebody thinks about it or, or sees an, uh, a social media post about your podcast, one click and they go straight in and they start listening. You know, it can, mm -hmm. and you know, when we get into the, the broadcasting part of this and how you get your recording out there, we'll talk about ways you can make it super simple. Yeah. No lead magnets, no, none of that goes along with podcasts. They don't convert well analytically. They don't, this is all, you got to give it for free, you know? Right. You give it for free. And if you're trying to make money on it, you do it by making them listen to a short advertising message that yep. somebody paid for. So um, that's where your revenue comes from. Mm -hmm. Like in the first five seconds of a YouTube video. Um, Ernie asked how much research or script is written in advance of recording that's really we're going to talk about that in the uh, interview episode which I believe is next week uh, we're going to talk tech and equipment and we're going to talk recording and interview process um, so I will say this about that Ernie and that is do your homework um, I, each person I go talk to, I've, I've researched them. I know a, a little bit about them. I'm always surprised and I always learn cool new stuff, but know enough about your subject to ask them intelligent questions. So yes, those things are written down. Um, and my podcast format is essentially six questions that we go through every time. And it's a different person each time. So the answers vary widely. Um, let me tell you briefly, has anybody out there listened to my podcast at all? It's called Finding My Quiet Place. I don't know if anyone's listened to it. Oh, <laughs> Christine, thank you. So um, 
what I decided to do was a little bit of a hybrid thing. Um, as a photographer, I love taking pictures with my old 1950s Rolleiflex camera. It's a, it's a place where my, I can be really calm and it's very zen for me. So I wanted to just take pictures of people at first. But when I would go to what, I would ask them, what's your quiet place? Where do you go to mentally recharge and, and focus? And I did a couple of these photo um, missions, shall we say. And I had such great conversations with people while I was doing it that I said, you know, I should really be recording these because these are fascinating people doing interesting things. I shouldn't be the only one who gets to hear this stuff. So then I went back and I interviewed them and I started making it this two part um, thing where I would photograph them for a few minutes on this old camera, take 12 exposures, roll a film is done. And then I would sit down and say, so talk to me about what stresses you out. What, what, what's your life like and what causes stress in your life? And what do you do to fix that? And so the answers range as if you, anybody might have seen the Instagram or heard the podcast, you know, kayaking down the Wakaiva River to painting with loud Dolly Parton music playing to jigsaw puzzles to all sorts of things. And everybody's got a different place they go to, to find their quiet place. So that was the niche. That was the niche for me. And during this process of figuring out the tech and figuring out how to interview better and figuring out how to get it up out there in all of the different places, I realized, you know, I've done a heck of a lot of homework on this now. And so that's why we're here today to share some of what we've learned with you. Um, we are, uh, we are at 2.45. Let me see before I go any further with any of this. There it is. Thank you, Tom. Finding My Quiet Place. It is on Stitcher and Spotify and Apple Podcasts and everywhere else, thanks to the, uh, the uh, publishing service I use. So yeah, I'd love, I'm not going to give you homework to listen to my dumb podcast, but I would love it if some of you would go look at some of the pictures and, and, uh, and if there's someone interesting in there, by all means. And that's the thing, you know, Bob Codds is one of my favorite people. And this gave me an excuse to go sit down with him for 30 minutes and talk to him. It was a magical thing. Cole Neesmith and Kay Rollins and folks I know, but I got to spend time with them. So my podcast is an excuse to go and chat. So I guess that's my dirty little secret is, you know, I don't care if you listen or not. I got to talk to them. <laughs> so questions um, about this whole planning process. What else do you guys want to know? And feel free to Fire up your mic if you want to just ask me. But um, the the idea that going in prepared, knowing the answers to everything we just talked about, will help make your first interview or or solo discussion more interesting for your listeners, um, more uh, more on topic, and you know more concise as well. If you know what you're going to say, you can be, you know, like I had my list of things and I'm pretty much all through it. So I don't want to drag this out. If I, I, I do want to jump in next week with equipment. Um, that's where I really get to geek out. I'm going to talk about um, microphones and recording gear and what else, uh, whether you use, uh, oh, and software. We're going to do a lot about um, different kinds of software for editing. And then um, we'll talk about the interview process. But. Oh, Michelle has a question. Is there a cost to be broadcast on the different platforms? Yes, a little. Um, it's essentially, not say what? I said it was, it, it's not much depending on, I know you're gonna answer the question, so. Yeah, yeah, it isn't much, but it's a bit like you, you pay for convenience. Um, and broadcasting is gonna be episode three, but just so you know, you could go and manually upload your podcast to all the different places, put it on your website, um, go to Apple Podcasts, go through Stitcher, go to Spotify, go to everywhere else that it lives. Or you can pay for a service like I do, which is, I don't know, $15 a month or something. And I upload it once with my graphics, right? Each episode gets its own image, um, as well as the podcast's artwork itself. And 
I upload once and I schedule launch. It's always 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning because I figure people get up, grab a cup of coffee, and that's a good time to listen to Quiet Place stuff. Your time and launch date may be different, but I always try to get it up by Friday afternoon, schedule it for the morning, tell everybody I know that it's going to be up, especially because the people I interview often have larger followings than I do. So if I tell Cole Neesmith, hey, your episode's dropping tomorrow morning, he'll tell the world and advertise it for me. So um, her follow-up was a distributor like TuneCore or CD Baby. I think so, yes. The one I use is called um, Liz Liz Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, which stands for Liberated Syndication. And uh, the reason I chose that one is because two of the biggest podcasts that I listen to, biggest in number of listeners out there, um, I asked both of them, I just sent them a private message and said, hey, what do you guys use for distribution? And both of them said Libsyn is the best thing out there. It's a little under the radar and there are lots of others. So don't by any means believe that's the only one, but it's worth checking out at least. Um, and it's worked great for me so far. Um, it's easy to use. It's pretty intuitive. It's not the, it's not the prettiest backend part uh, that I've ever seen, but it does the job effectively and inexpensively. So it's, it's worked good, but yeah. Do you have any legal paperwork? Oh, oh that's a great question. No. <laughs> On top of that one, um, Dave has an, a question as well after that one. I don't know if you can see that one. Oh, right. Right. I see it. Got it. Um, legalese, legally, I am, uh, no. Um, I haven't had ever had anybody sign any sort of disclaimer or privacy agreement or anything. I'm... I guess if somebody was to say to me, oh, you know what, I do have, I did have one interviewee, some of you may know him, um, he's an Imagineer with Disney, mm. but he's not allowed to say that he's an Imagineer with Disney. And fortunately, he didn't say it in the podcast when I asked him about, you know, tell us about yourself. He didn't mention it, but I had written it in the, in the notes that go along with it, um, the description. and so. Four weeks later, he called me up and said, hey, do you mind deleting that whole um, mention of Disney Imagineers because they don't like their people being known out there in the world? So I removed the reference in the type, but fortunately I didn't have to go in and re-edit the conversation. So that's the only kind of legal problem I've had so far. But we're not talking about real sensitive stuff in mind. You know, it's not like we're giving legal advice or or talking about accounting. It's It's just, you know, where do you find peace and quiet? So I don't think I'm in the kind of world that's gonna cause um, me too much problems. Um, I'll do some research and see if I can find a kind of a, a release for audio interviews that I can, um, oh yeah, the podcast for uh, real estate. Yeah, Rhonda asked for the other people, any disclaimers, the podcast I'm focused on is real estate and that is my line of business. Yeah. Yeah, there might, you might want to put a disclaimer, not so much for um, your guests to sign, but something on the website that says, you know, this is not, um, <laughs> one, of, one of the podcasts I listen to is um, a lawyer and a inquisitive interviewer, shall we say, a non-lawyer. And they talk about legal stuff all the time, but right at the beginning of every episode, before it starts, the, there's a voice that comes on and says, Listening to this podcast does not form a client attorney privilege. Um, you know, you are not a client and don't take legal advice from a podcast. <laughs> so I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think it's important if you're in a business where you could be saying something that people might act on, mm. um, you should probably get a little verbiage that you say at the beginning of every episode. I think that's smart. Um, Rhonda, you can also reach out to Aura and then, or talk to your broker about um, the FREC rules for that. That might be a, a good, um, reach out to them just to be sure what kind of way, not only to protect the people that are listening, you know, protect, but you got to protect yourself as well as the listeners. And if it becomes intellectual property or however that kind of works, but I know Aura and FREC can probably help. Yeah. Yeah. And then jumping back up to Dave's question. Sorry, I skipped you, Dave. Um, uh, what about asking the person you're interviewing what they'd like to cover or discuss? Should it be a collaborative effort? 
I think the answer to that is depends on the kind of podcast you're doing, right? Um, in my case, I'm there to talk about a very specific thing. Um, I touch a little bit on, you know, what do you do? What's your day-to-day -day like? What things in, uh, instill stress or anxiety in your life? And then I jump to, and what do you do about it? And then that's where we end up, right? Whatever it is that they do is what we just photographed and we're going to talk about. And so, yes, it's collaborative in that they answer in any way they want to, but I already know in advance what we're going to do because we already shot the pictures. Um, I think in other types of interviews where it's more about, this is an interesting person, let's see what they have to say, you know, are you following politics today or whatever? I think then you have a more of a give and take. And everybody that I um, interview, I send them kind of a bit of boilerplate that says, if you've never listened to my podcast, which is likely, here's what I'm going to ask you about and photograph you doing. Um, if, you, if you're good with that, then let's just set up a time and place. And there's a couple of people who said, I'd like to do it, but my the place I do it is a total mess and I don't want anyone seeing it, which I didn't think about it at the time, but I really added a lot of complexity by adding the visual component to my audio podcast. Um, I don't recommend you do that because it makes things 10 times harder to schedule. If all you're doing is chatting with someone and it's never going to be visual, just audio, that frees up a lot. Um, a lot of, you know, where the person is doesn't matter so much anymore. So from a um, business standpoint, if somebody's, if some of you out there are thinking about this for your business, like Rhonda, um, you might want to consider the value proposition that you're offering that person that's coming on. So if you're talking about, um, as we'll use Rhonda as an example, if you have a great relationship with an insurance person or with a lender and you want to have them come on, it, it might be what they want to talk about. Or if it is a, if you have a service-based business and you're, you know, trying to do another service-based business, come in, what product are they trying to push? What sale do they have going on right now? Or what kind of, um, where are they at in their sales cycle? Those kind of questions can help further their reach as well. And you guys can scratch each other's back. Yeah. Um, hopes that you're giving them marketing stuff and, and vice versa. So when it comes to like your business, it may be what it, that, that, that question may come into play when it's like, what is it like right now? Um, you know, if it's like lending, you know, with homes, you know, there's a lot going on with that. So, um, and, and it's, you know, and of course, if you're a product-based business or if you're a service-based business, all of that varies, but um, definitely think about that value proposition. Right. And, you know, we talked at the very beginning about that little bit of advertising that can go in and generate funds. What I've been doing since I don't have anybody who wants to speak to my 16 listeners um, yet. Yeah. Um, you're dogging yourself too much today, Jim. I, I put in an ad for my own company. Uh, I do a project called the Legacy Life Project. And the, a, I figure until somebody wants to come and pay me for advertising, I'll just use that little spot of about mm -hmm. 15 or 20 seconds at the beginning to say, in fact, Delana recorded it for me. So if you listen to one of my later podcasts, you'll hear Delana say, this episode is brought to you by blah, blah, blah. And, so, <laughs> um, and I wanted a different voice than my own so that you can clearly tell that that's the ad. and you know, when we get into the editing side of things, I'm going to talk much more about keeping people um, techniques you can use to help let people know where they are in the process, which is an ad, which isn't, you know, opening and closing sounds and things like that. So I think we're good. Delana, have I forgotten anything? No, but I did want to touch on the why um, that I was thinking about it. Also too, when you're coming up with your, why do you want to do this? This is something that you can ask yourself. It may be something that you're good at. Absolutely. You're a carpenter, all of those things, but what lights you on fire? Like you might be an accountant, but Jim, I think you've used this, you know, if you, you might be an accountant, but you might be really good at oil painting or you might really be good at something else. So what lights you on fire? And then also what is it that you're talking about every single day, every time you're around somebody? Number one, first of all, with me at social media, I'm constantly talking about social media to everybody, anybody that will listen. And then the second part of that is uh, mommies, moms. And uh, actually I've talked with Polly about doing um, some podcasts, her and I working on that together because um, she's hysterical and um, you know that kind of thing. So what lights you on fire? What's your everyday thing about? And then it won't necessarily become a chore. And that's you know, when you get to that point where you're like, oh God, who do I interview now? And we'll get to that marketing portion of it, but there is a chance there's called batching and scheduling. If you're not familiar with that marketing term, there's opportunities to do that as well. Like Jim said, you want to have some under your belt and there's ways that we can talk about on getting that scheduled. So it doesn't seem like a burden because you'll get burned out and then you'll give up. 
And uh, that's what we don't want. And that's what, you know, no. my gym has made this a four week session so that we're not overwhelming you and you're shutting down. You're really taking the time to do the homework and think about if this is something you want to do and why um, you would want to do it. So those things that you're talking about, you know, on a consistent basis with your friends. Cause a lot of times my girlfriends and I will drink, you know, a bottle of wine together or three, whatever we won't judge today. And yeah. we're like, Oh my God, we should totally be on a podcast. <laughs> not the right time to make that decision. So <laughs> not at all. Well, that's why uh, we want to spend time thinking about it. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Delana, two things. I, I just saw Rhonda's question, which I want to oh, touch yeah. on before okay. we run out of time. Yes. But also I have to echo what Delana says. If this is something you're doing as a, passion project or a hobby and you don't plan on making a living at it, it's going to eat up quite a bit of time, especially in the beginning. So yeah, make sure it's something that you really love to do so it doesn't feel like work. Um, I've got to touch on the voice thing. Oh, I personally uh, hate my own voice. I, I, if there's one thing I could change about me, I've said this my whole life, is I would get a different voice. I'd be taller and I'd get a different voice. Um, I you've just got to get used to the way you sound. And we're going to talk about that in the editing process because you get to hear your own voice mm -hmm. constantly. Um, you could, it's, it's feasible to do this in such a way where you ask the client the question and they answer in full sentences and you edit yourself out of it and it just ends up being a long diatribe by someone else that's been guided. I think it would be more interesting to hear the back and forth. Um, so yeah, you just have to, yeah, and Rhonda, you sound differently than, than you hear yourself. And oh, yeah. there is no better self-actualization and self-acceptance of yourself than to get used to hearing your own voice and being okay with it. So, well, yep. you know, we've got some self-help books, Rhonda, we can, we can pass <laughs> along so you can get used to it. It truly is. I've just had to just deal with the fact that I sound like a dork and I'm going to just leave it that way. But um, you, it is... It is so important to just be okay with it because everyone else hears you all the time and they're used to what you sound like. You're the only one who doesn't hear what you sound like until you record yourself. So yeah, everyone else has accepted it. So you may as well, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to run over here. I, I promised you guys an hour. Um, any more questions, comments, suggestions? Are we touching on the stuff that's interesting? Is this worth your time? Are you going to come back again next week or I'm awesome. Delana and I going to talk to ourselves? <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ellie. Um, I hope it's been helpful. Lawrence, it was nice to see you, by the way. I didn't say hey earlier, but I'm glad you're there. Thanks. And you guys are very we welcome. We'll send that email, too, and it'll have that, that in it. Um, and then also, too, uh, we will send out another email because um, we're still trying to get – Jim knows more about Zoom than I do, but we're getting used to this. So we'll send out another email uh, with your Zoom confirmation and everything to kind of make sure you guys can log on again. Uh, for next week. So, and Dave, you're welcome. There's a lot of thank yous coming in, Jim. I don't know if you're seeing those. You guys Good. are welcome. Two, two quick things. One is we're also going to include with that email the four worst podcasts that are out there so you can Ooh. listen to how not to do it. So those are hilarious. Okay. Don't listen for long, but listen for a minute because they're terrible. Um, and secondly, Lawrence Vexler, who you guys can see right there in the red shirt, is an audio engineering expert. Yes! So when it comes time to talking the real tech stuff, I'm going to defer to him because he knows so much more about this than I do. So You're I'll tell you why right? and he can tell you why it's yes, wrong. I will be, I will okay. be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> so next week we're talking equipment. You can go crazy and spend a ton or you can go inexpensive and spend very little. Um, and we're going to talk about the recording and the interview process. So I'll look forward to seeing everybody at 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Good. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate you coming. And Thank you, thanks, Elena, for being my better half on this episode. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys soon. See you next week. Bye. See ya.